Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. This is such an amazing day. Uh, Jaira, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. I want my son close. This is a, uh, and my daughter. Where is she? Come. Oh, she's okay. Um, so this is a moment in history that we are super excited uh, to share. So first and foremost, happy Juneteenth, everyone. Yeah. Woo! Oh, I am so excited to be here on this morning. There we go. We got some volume today. We are saying this loud and proud. It is Juneteenth Day, and it is a little bit different because of COVID. Everybody's got their masks. Um, and we do not have a traditional Juneteenth ceremony this year, but we're shaking it up and we're doing something a little bit different. Um, and so it was important for us, first and foremost, uh, to raise the Juneteenth flag. So that's what we're gonna be doing in just a few minutes. And I wanna give a huge shout out to uh, um, uh, Mr. Claiborne Benson and the uh, North Cobb Neighborhood Center and all of the other organizations that help make this event what it is every single year. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to defer to a couple of my colleagues to talk about Juneteenth um, and then we will do the flag raising. So first I'm gonna call up Alderwoman Coggs and then we're gonna call up the treasurer who um, was able to pass it at the state a few so many years ago. So we're gonna give a little bit of a Juneteenth history and then we're gonna do a flag raising. All right, come on up Alderwoman. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Now we are here celebrating the 155th Juneteenth Day. So I know we got more energy than that. Let's try it again. Good morning. All right, happy Juneteenth. Given the challenging times we are in with COVID-19, the traditional Juneteenth in North Cot Neighborhood House generally sponsors and has sponsored for more than 40 years. It's one of the oldest celebrations and festivals of Juneteenth um, in the nation. Unfortunately, for people's safety, they decided not to do it this year. Um, there are several smaller community gatherings throughout the day, and we hope people take part in them. And I'm thankful to my colleague, Alderwoman Lewis, and others who, and, and Mr. Claiborne Benson at the Wisconsin Black Historical Society Museum, who lent the flags to us that we will be raising here today for us to take some time and recognize this momentous day. Um, for those who don't know, you know, Juneteenth is a day of liberation. June 19th, 1865 was the day that um, the last enslaved Africans in Galveston, Texas became aware of the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation, which happened in January of 1863. The jubilation and celebration that occurred after getting word of their freedom is something that 155 years later, we celebrate here today. So just like some have July 4th, that they celebrate here in this nation. For those of us of African descent in America, this is our day of liberation. I would be remiss if I did not mention and look at all of the unrest that is taking place, not only in this city, but across the globe as it relates um, to black lives mattering um, in, this, in this world, right? Um, so it's interesting on this day um, that we celebrate anyway, um, that I think people should even celebrate with even greater intention. And my hope is that in these times, more than ever, that people today pay tribute to our ancestors who fought and showed the resilience for us to even be here today, that we revel in the now, the fact that there are people across the globe unified on the idea and concept that black lives do in fact matter, and that we get renewed and refreshed today, because although we celebrate today, we recognize that there is so much more that we must do to improve the condition of people of African descent in America. Thank you and happy Juneteenth. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. And then on that note, I say Happy Juneteenth Day. 
Come on, let me hear it. Happy Juneteenth Day. Now, this is a cog following a cogs. I am uh, the, the taller uh, but homelier cogs. I am uh, Treasurer Spencer Cox, and I used to be uh, Senator Spencer Cox, and <laughs> I am the author of the state Juneteenth holiday bill. <laughs> Along with Senator Lena Taylor, in uh, 2009, we passed the state Juneteenth holiday bill. And I must say that it was on the 54th anniversary of the Rosa Parks bus incident in Montgomery, Alabama. We passed that bill on the exact day 54 years later. Give that a round of applause. Juneteenth means so much to everybody all over the country, but it is especially a great tribute in Milwaukee. Nobody does Juneteenth like we do, do Juneteenth in Milwaukee. We have the biggest, we have the best. You want to see all the relatives you haven't seen all year? Go to Juneteenth, except this year. <laughs> we, because of the coronavirus, because of the unrest, because of so many things, we are not having the world's largest Juneteenth celebration this year, okay? But we must celebrate in our hearts as if we had tens of thousands of people on Martin Luther King Avenue, okay? And I am so proud to be here to celebrate the Juneteenth raising of the flag. My understanding is that um, the flag was created by the founder of the National Juneteenth Celebration Foundation. His name was Ben Haith, okay? He created the flag in 1997, okay? Now, they didn't raise it until the year 2000 in Boston, Massachusetts. Now, Boston is great, but I'm telling you folks, nobody does Juneteenth like Milwaukee. So here's to getting rid of the coronavirus and all the other distractions from Juneteenth, and let's look for 2021 to be the biggest, the best Juneteenth celebration ever. Thank you. going to open it up for my colleagues to come on up and then we are going to invite Nikki Purvis to sing the Black National Anthem and then we are going to raise the flagpole. All right, come on up. Good morning. Good morning. It is Juneteenth and Alderwoman Cogs and Treasurer Cogs just gave a brilliant history of what this day means and what it's all about. Uh, I was recently asked um, about what Treasurer Cog said at the top of his statements about Black Lives Matter, about whether or not that is a radical or political statement. And my response to both of those questions was no. It is not. It's not radical and it isn't political. What it simply means is that People of African descent in this country deserve the same rights and privileges and guarantees of birth in this nation that everybody else does. And as I was reflecting on Juneteenth, and I was looking at the history, August of 1619, when the first cargo ships packed to the brim with slaves captured in Africa, brought to the shores of Virginia, all the way up until that day, June 19th, 1865, was 246 years. And to today, 155 years. We're not terribly removed, folks. We're not terribly removed from all the atrocities that have been committed against people of color 
in the United States. That's why on streets like this, streets in suburban communities, streets in communities large and small across Wisconsin and across America, you have people chanting those three words, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. And they're chanting those words because they do want that sense of equality, because they do want those protections, because they do want to be seen as citizens with every right and privilege like every person other that's born in this country. So that 155 years, that encompassed the segregation, it encompassed Jim Crow, it encompassed all these institutional systemic things, including the 13th Amendment, that had a carve-out provision that allowed slavery to persist in this country and that started the prison industrial complex boom that we see and suffer from today. So that's why we celebrate Juneteenth, because it's our initial independence. It's when America started the process of living out its creed for all of its citizens. We're not there yet. We have a long way to go. But if we keep on fighting like we're fighting today, I think that in time, we will get there. Happy Juneteenth, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. And happy Juneteenth, everyone. What a day we are in. What a time to celebrate like none other. We've seen these rallies before. We've seen these protests before. But just as my colleagues have said, we cannot let it stop. Now is the time we've been unified. Now is the time we have brought black lives back to the forefront. Black lives do matter. Black people do matter. And it's about time that when we make laws, it's about time when we decide when we're going to make it better for everybody. And as lawmakers, I'm holding myself accountable, along with my colleagues, that we are doing a better job at making sure that we have equity for housing, for jobs, for every food. We're tired of having food deserts in our community, but today we stand in efforts, in unity, to fight for what's right. And Black Lives Do Matter, and happy Juneteenth, because I'm excited and I want to say more. But God bless you all, and let's really band together and be the people, the great people that we are as black and brown folk. Let's do it, y'all, because we are on the front line now. God bless you. I have to undress. <laughs> I wanted to be the last one because I'm going to be your official hype man for today. Uh -oh. <laughs> because um, we're raising flags today, right? Yeah. And I thought that we were in a celebration, mm -hmm. but it seems like y'all getting tired of celebrating. Uh -oh. It seems like you've reached a point in the road where you feel like you have arrived. It seems to me that we have reached a point collectively that we no longer have to say to each other Black Lives Matter and Hispanic Lives Matter and Little Kids Matter. But they do matter. And the, tr and the truth is, the reason why we have to keep repeating it is because of the comments that came before us, we don't act like it. We don't act like all lives matter. We don't act like black lives matter. We don't act like children matter. We don't act like women matter. So in this celebration, it's a reminder to all of us that we have not reached our creed, that we're still, tr we're still striving to do it. But unlike most people, and a lot of young people that's out in these streets today, patience is growing thin. And I don't feel like we have to wait another generation in order to reach these lofty goals. That's one of the purposes of the chant. Because none of us matter until all of us matter. Yeah. 
And the truth of the matter is you're actually less of a human being. You're less of a human being if you cannot recognize the humanity in your fellow man and woman. So I want us to be all that we can be. And I want us to act like we're celebrating the fact that we can be all that we can be today. Not tomorrow, not next year, not a generation from now. Today is about a celebration of being human today. So clap like all lives matter. Clap like black lives matter. Clap like you matter. And clap like you won't let anybody else in this society begin to act like we can't be what we're supposed to be today. Happy Juneteenth Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I get to follow that. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter in Milwaukee, in Wisconsin, in this country, in this world. Black Lives Matter. Juneteenth Day matters. This is a historic day, and I want to thank all the women Lewis for her leadership and the Common Council members for the moves that they made here today. And as I was standing here, I was thinking, because it's a historic day, there'll be lots of pictures. In 30 or 40 years from now, there'll be pictures. And your kids or your grandkids are gonna say, well, why were they all wearing masks? Why were they all wearing masks today? So I want to go back three months because black lives matter and what happens in this country and this city matters. It was three months ago when COVID-19 hit this community. Friday the 13th is when we had our first case. And within a week or two, we saw the first dashboard of where the cases were hitting Milwaukee. And it took me less than one second when I looked at that dashboard to recognize that it was hitting the African American community fastest and hardest. And I looked at that and I thought infant mortality, life expectancy, access to health care, cancer mortality, in every one of those categories in every one of those categories, the indicators are worse for African Americans than they are for Caucasians. And that's the reason that this city and this county declared racism a public health issue. And we did it because black lives matter. And we know, I know, that we have a tremendous amount of work to do. Every one of us knows that. And we know with the events over the last month that the criminal justice system, the relations between the police and the community have to be changed, have to be changed, and there has to be an understanding and a respect for the residents of this community, no matter who they are. Because black lives matter. So it is Independence Day. It is Independence Day because those slaves in Galveston, Texas, who two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation were still indentured because their slave owners never told them that they were free, and many of them, in fact, had been slaves in the eastern part of the country, and when the unrest of the Civil War began, the slave owners moved to Texas. So you had hundreds of thousands of slaves, and they learned they were free. But I think the question everyone is asking is, is our African Americans in this country free? Are they free if they can't get the health care that others get? 
if they can't get the housing, the education, the jobs. That is our challenge. Our challenge as policymakers at the local level, the state level, and the national level. We have to do better. Every one of us has to do better. And my commitment to you is that I will work with these fine public servants and others to improve the quality of life for all people in this community. But we know that right now, because of what we're seeing, that black lives matter and we have to do better. So when you're out there today, wear the mask. Wear the mask. There is no exemption in the pandemic for celebrations. So please wear the mask, keep your socially distanced, and be safe. God bless you. I am absolutely going to echo those sentiments. We need to make sure that we are wearing our masks because uh, COVID is still here. So I am going to ask one of our very own uh, to come up and sing the Black National Anthem as we prepare to raise the flag. Yeah. So Nikki Purvis, come on up. <laughs> Feel free to sing along with me. <laughs> Lift every voice and sing to earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the glistening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling seas. Sing a song. Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the March on till victory is won. Thank you. Nikki, you better sign. <laughs> so I am going to ask that we bring up the flag we are going to give the media an opportunity to see it um, before we unveil it, before we unveil it, bring it up. I'm going to ask my colleagues and those to come and help us unveil, stretch out the flag so that everybody can see it. Yep, come in front, come in front. Yep, so they can see it. They asked for it to be stretched out in the front. There we go. One line. And I'm just, as they are doing that, I'm going to give a brief overview of the explanation. I know this was um, very, um, scooch just a, yep, right there, yep, yep. Um, I know it was very interesting to see that we actually have a, the other way, flip it, yep that we actually have a Juneteenth flag. This came to a surprise to many of us, so I want to be able to take this opportunity to explain the reason behind the flag. And as Treasurer uh, Cog said, the, uh, the flag was created, there we go, turn it around, there we go, right there. No, nope, it goes, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So the, the flag was created by Ben Haith. 
1997. The banner with a bursting star in the middle is the Juneteenth flag, a symbolic representation of the end of slavery in the United States. The flag uh, revised in 2000 uh, by an observation by the National Juneteenth Observation Foundation. Uh, you got it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let him get it. <laughs> we got it. All right, we got it. Okay. So, okay. So the the flag. Uh, was created by Ben Haith in 1997 and revised in 2000 with the actual date, uh, Juneteenth, 9, 1865. And the country, and it, uh, the country has so many aspects to it that are spiritual. And I believe this flag is of that nature, said Ben Haith. And the design came through me. Designing the flag and its symbols was deliberate. Was a deliberate process, Haith said. And the each elements represents uh, as follows: the star, the white star in the center of the flag, has a dual meaning. For once, it for one, it represents Texas, the Lone Star State. It was in Galveston, Texas, in 19 in 1865, where the Union soldiers informed the country's last remaining enslaved people that they are under the Emancipation Proclamation issued two and a half years earlier. But the star goes beyond Texas, representing freedom of all African Americans in each state. The burst around the the star, the outline around the star inspired by Nova, a, t a term that astronomers use to mean a new star. On June 19th, on the Juneteenth flag, this represents the new beginning for the African Americans of Galveston and throughout our country. The arc represents a new horizon, the, the opportunities the, and promises that lay ahead for black Americans. The colors, red, white, and blue, represents the American flag, a reminder that slaves and their descendants were and are Americans. And so it is with that that we are officially going to raise our flag. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, how are you? Oh, I need a new hit. Oh, you know, I've July 14th. You know, I've got, I got two news. You've got two news. Oh, it's oh, the greatest in the world. It is the greatest. Oh, you got his license back. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> he did my son's hip years ago, so I trust him. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Uh -huh.
And with that, we have an official Juneteenth flag here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.